Hey, it's Andrew Huang. Today's video is all bangers. I'm so excited for you to hear. If this is your first time watching, the concept is super simple. Four different artists are gonna take the same audio material and use it as the foundation of a new piece of music that they'll create. My guests this episode are Dressage, Chuck Sutton, and Must Die. Today's sample is actually a little snippet from one of my old songs. Let me play you the part that we used. Jump in the sea and swim across Climb to the highest mountain tops And shout your name I wanna see the light that's in your eyes That song is Boombox from my 2012 album Love and Desolation And uh, when it gets to my turn, I'll explain why we're sampling me But uh, for now, let's see what everyone else did with this sample What's up? I'm Keely. I produce and release music as Dressage. I'm really stoked to be a part of this one. Thank you, Andrew, for asking me. So this sample that we had to play with was challenging because it was a completely baked two mix of a song. So there's a lot of elements you want to use, but they're all like layered with drums or layered with background vocals or whatever. So this part... I pitched this into my key, by the way. I heard the background vocal chord, which is a kind of this nice major seventh vibe, so I zeroed in on it a bit. And then I turned it into splices with Simpler in Ableton, and I found kind of this general pattern that also worked with the drum hits that were in there. So I really liked this. And I turned that into. And I also liked this Your. And I brought it and I kind of pitched it around so I could play with it and add it into my piano. I kind of created a pattern that I liked that was really based around the higher vibe. I also added in some of my own vocal samples. So that's me. I also went and found some Foley sounds that um, I wanted to turn into my drum kit. Here is a horse saddle being put on. This is a bird wing and I turned it into a hi-hat. Recorded my Yamaha piano and kind of went for this like Benny and the Jets vibe, Frank Ocean vibe. You hold me like a weapon. I also added my Moog uh, Sub 37 bass. You hold me like a weapon. So thanks for listening. My dog's barking in the back because that's what he does. The silence immediately. Very vaporwave. Very vaporwave. Okay. Nice. I'm realizing now that chord is, is the sample. It's me, but she's turned it into something so characteristically her. I don't know how. This is so sick. You hold me like a weapon. Oh, and that voice. You dig me into your the vocals skin. are incredible. And I will make a oh. you know, It's that like wibbly wobbly noise in the background. That's super fun. Bass sound is really cool. I like that lyric about the angels in Hollywood. The vocal production is fantastic. This is a jet. This is a song. as well very dreamlike it's so alive and dynamic like there's always something changing that's crazy okay yeah that's awesome <laughs> hi my name is chuck sutton and when andrew asked me to do this i was super excited because i consider myself a sample based producer and I thought this was right up my alley. So the first thing I did is I looked through the original sample for any little 
vocal bits that I could end up chopping somehow. Just adding little variations here and there. I think I added some echo here at some point. After that, where it got really fun for me, is I took the whole sample and I looped it down to a really, really tiny portion. So tiny that it becomes its own little waveform. What I ended up doing is creating a whole group for what I just call the melodics, just anything that's gonna be not related to percussion or bass. If I play that with the, the clap. And if I play that back again with the vocals, you notice that certain parts stay silent, but certain parts get even more exciting. And so this is allowing me to figure out where the pull and tension and groove is gonna be in the drums. I think a lot of people start with drums first. I've always kind of worked backwards and I think it's really interesting to put down elements rhythmically first and then figure out some groove you wouldn't have thought of before. And then if we have the bass, I kind of followed the vibe of just the other elements. And it feels like I did all of that at once, linearly, intentionally, but it was really just finding a sparse rhythm that could be the grounding motif and then filling it in with a bunch of other sounds. Again, all of these synths are the initial sample, the chords and the flute, but what I ended up doing is this green audio right here, you can go over to Ableton's warping modes. These little gray arrows right here are mapping out the transients. And so if you look at where those are on here, as I start to drag down this 100 value, it's gonna start implementing it. You can add these gray markers yourself, you can delete them. I thought they sounded really cool. Pitch them down a fifth. And I got a whole new groove to play around with that felt a little more hip hop-ish. If I take off that audio sample, all I added was this, which this bass is the original song and these are little chops of the voice. So anything that's not a drum, is the original sample. I really hope you enjoy this. All right, there I am. Classic Chuck Chops. Oh, I love that sound. That's just like, just like all over the place, so messy, so random, but also so somehow cohesive. All right, I gotta watch the breakdown for this. Watch. Yes. The jazz. What's that? Wow, really cool work, Chuck. That was really cool. I love that you started with the sample and then it was just like, nope. I just totally changed it. With the original sample, I basically just French housed it. Filtered it in really slowly. And then I switched it up here. Yeah, not much changes. It's just a little messing with the formants a bit. Basically used it as a bed for a ton of melodic stuff. Starts off as the lead vocal. 
but then it becomes this like gravy stab. I also chopped it up a little bit and added this. Also, I used the vocal to make some bass noises in serum, so. And then there's a second one that goes with it. They're pretty messy, but I think that's what makes them fun. So I took the original sample and did a lot of glitchy edits and stuff um, that I kind of tend to do in my music. Even if it's tucked back in the mix, not quite too loud, it adds like an excitement. It's actually a pretty simple track. It's just heavily, heavily layered with a lot of obnoxious rave synths like this. Pretty goofy stuff. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what else to explain other than that. It's just a uh, dubstep, man. <laughs> okay. the reharmonization he did on that. How he gets it to be like so massive. Yeah. yeah. Makes you want to go on a run. My God. That's fine. <laughs> Also a huge pair. This is like the soundtrack to an apocalypse movie where like the earth is just being destroyed by lava. I like the vocal. Festival crowd. About to lose their shit. To the fun. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that was really sick. Fantastic. Oh my God. Such a crazy direction to the same sample. I have to still fathom all of that. Yeah, I'm speechless, man. Lee, crushed it. So I started my track a while ago and I'm so glad I'm finally releasing it now. But the reason why I was sampling myself is that I had just moved to a new studio so I didn't have internet yet but I felt like sampling. So I was like, okay, what's on my computer? Uh, how about my old album? So I was just looking around for some kind of little chords to chop up, something like that. Picked my song Boombox and then I made this little loop out of it. And uh, they're clearly pitched up a bit. So I made a new progression out of these chords and this actually loops the whole way through this song. There's a few filter sweeps on it, some variations where uh, I pitch it down. So that's basically all I did with the sample, but it became the foundation for this song that I really love. You know, I started singing over it, rapping over it. There's this fun drum beat. I like that I found a thing that's not snare on two and four. It's just nice to be able to switch that up sometimes, and this is a pretty fun beat. Made some wobbles in Massive. There's also a serum in there on additional bass duties. 
then I added some other fun synths like this guy. <laughs> it sounds so dumb by itself, but it works in the track. And then uh, just the last thing I'll highlight is this fun lead sound that I made that's like four different layers. So it's my voice pitch shifted. Layered with an opera singer. And then layered with one massive synth. And another massive synth. So all together. And on top of the drop. Just channeling like passion pit dubstep or something. Anyway, here's my track. I like the vocals a lot. The snare is huge. These are really good backing vocals. Background is cool. It's like very Sega Genesis. Sneaky dubstep. Enough couldn't be a part. I couldn't you and I dance. Like in the seventies at a club. Get a little time, get along, baby, from the start. I see you like the sneaky dubstep. This is the pre-chorus. This is one of my favorite things I've heard from Andrew so far. cheeky little clip of the sample at the end there. Good job, Andrew. I really like that. Wow. Vibes. Party vibes. I like that a lot. Crazy. Okay. Wow. Um, the track had such a specific energy with sounds that all complemented and got one specific message across. And that's a very admirable task. I really enjoyed that. Hope you enjoyed that. Links for all the full tracks are in the description. If you're interested in learning more about music production, I also run an online class every few months. Uh, you can learn more about that at learnmonthly.com slash Andrew. Thanks again to all my guests. They are linked in the description as well. And I'm starting to lose light now, so I'm gonna go. Thanks for watching.